Hello, everybody, and thanks for being here today for another rendition of our webinar series. Today's topic is focused on how to add solar plus EDC projects in the suite for California opportunities, as well as discussing the current state of the market and SCF solutions to help serve it. Whether you've interacted with us in the past or this is your first time connecting with SCF, we're grateful you're here. We look forward to answering your questions and connecting with your team in the coming weeks. Today's agenda will start with us discussing a little bit about sustainable capital finance, who we are, where we've been, and where we're headed. We'll then dive deep into our pricing platform and show you firsthand how to price projects on our proprietary pricing platform, the SCF Suite, and show you how to get indicative rates and generate proposals, which really has never been easier with our free pricing platform. Next, we'll discuss the value proposition for incorporating a solar plus EVC solution, discussing everything you need to know about how the solution will not only save the property earning money, but also create upside and additional revenue through the addition of the charging stations. We'll then finish up by identifying the optimal EV location and lay out next steps to move your top of list project and all others forwards as efficiently and smoothly as possible. A little bit about sustainable capital finance. SCF is a third party PPA financier for commercial and industrial consumers. We also serve nonprofits, churches, schools, municipalities, and more. Really any projects that falls between resi and utility scale, specifically in that 100 kW to 20 megawatt range, SCF is likely to have provided a PPA quote for in the last 10 years of our existence. Over that time frame, we've connected with hundreds of EPCs, contracting over 200 million in distributed generation across 18 states. We've maintained this large network of EPCs through our free pricing platform, the SCF suite, which we'll show you here in a minute, where developers can enter projects, get instant PPA and register feedback, and ultimately create proposals to present to their offtaker all in a matter of minutes. And while SCF has primarily financed solar only opportunities to date, our first EV project went to online in 2022 with six DC fast chargers and we're preparing to commence construction on a healthy pipeline of combo PV and EV assets in California in the months and years to come. And that's really due to the exploding demand for EV chargers and the lack of charging infrastructure to support them. As you can see on the slide here, EV sales have been continuously on the rise for the last few years, with a 65% increase in 2022 versus 2021. And while that increase is pretty significant, EVs still only accounted for roughly 6% of all cars sold domestically in 2022. This was a doubling from 2021, but rough estimates have the U.S. expecting to reach over 50% of U.S. cars sold in 2030 to be electric vehicles. Based on 2022 sales volume, that's projected to be almost 7 million electric vehicles sold in that year alone which is quite a few EVs for what is currently only 22,000 publicly available fast chargers and a little over 90,000 publicly available level two chargers. And while that charger percentage grew by 40% last year, the ratio is still a staggering 20 to one of total number of EVs on the road today, 2.3 million compared to the available chargers, 114,000. Case in point, chargers are not keeping pace and that's why SCF is making it a priority to make it easy for you as a developer to run solar plus EVC revenue share iterations and generate proposals quickly utilizing the SCF suite. That platform, which you're seeing the homepage of now, has evolved quite a bit over the years. So if you've used the platform before, this is your first time seeing the SCF suite. We're going to do a quick five minute walkthrough on how to run pricing in the quick Glow and how to generate PPA and EV revenue share proposals to present to your offtaker. This will be a quicker demo than we normally provide for our integrator partners. If you'd like a more hands-on demo, feel free to jot down our contact information, which will be listed at the end of the presentation today. We'd be happy to connect with you to answer any specific questions, work through a project, and just overall ensure your understanding of how the SCF suite can be an effective tool for you moving forwards. So this will be the home page you see when you get started with your own account. You obviously won't see any projects entered. They will show up as you create them. I'll start by hitting the quick quote button here in the top right with the lightning bolt. From there, it'll ask me a project type to get started. We're focusing today on solar plus EVC, so I'm going to select the EVC revenue share button. 
that'll bring us to this page. I'll go ahead and start filling out the project name, host state, and the respective zip code. The zip code is a massive component of our usage assumptions. Our team spent several months compiling zip code data and determining high traffic EV areas, along with high median salaries. They also looked at several other air variables to project usage assumptions across the state of California. So if the model ever lets you know that the project will not meet our minimum standards, the zip code is likely the culprit. From there, you're able to enter information on mounting type and respective solar information. For today, we'll do a 300 kW system with a 1600 production factor. All project term lengths for revenue share are capped at 20, with PPAs assumed for 25. We'll input a standard $3 per watt bill cost and an estimated placed in service date of Q1 2024. The property type is also going to be another usage indicator in our model. For instance, a shopping mall where people are attracted to amenities separate from the charging stations provides a layer of security on our worst case usage assumptions. Furthermore, if the property is located close to a federal corridor, it's a lot more likely to meet charger and rev share expectations as well. We'll then ask a few more questions. Is it grid tied? What is the expected charger station rating? We generally project for 100 kW, 180 kW and any other available incentives for the project. We are already incorporating LCFS credits, but if you have others that, that apply, feel free to select that from the dropdown. Finally, we'll ask for the house usage to get a good idea on how much of this solar is going to go where. I'll then hit calculate and see that in this scenario, 12 chargers and a 10% revenue share would work. Now this is a high level overview of what we can support and it really acts as a disqualifying and or qualifying calculator. We understand there might be scenarios where we could support 12 chargers, but the space or off taker might not allow for it. In that case, we're happy to adjust accordingly. The quick quote tool should really be used as a discussion starter or non-starter. And then we're able to dive deeper into the specifics once that project is created. And once that project is created, it'll subsequently notify all the project analysts on our team. And there's really a few areas that I wanna know once that project is created. So here in this utility details area, we're gonna ask for avoided cost information. If that term is foreign to you, not a worry, go ahead and click the upload utility bill information here. And our team can run that avoided cost analysis. Generally, we ask for the last 12 months of utility bill data to be as accurate as possible in our savings projections. Without that information, though, the proposal you generate on the next slide will not show PPA savings to go along with revenue share projections. That PPA proposal button on the next page is located here in the top right. And it generally takes 10 to 30 seconds to populate. So I'll go ahead and open an already created one for this project just for the sake of time. As you can see, it's a four page document with revenue share projections, PPA cost saving projections, and a little bit about sustainable capital finance. You're free to use this as you please. It's our goal really with the SCF suite to provide you with tools you need to streamline pricing and ultimately close more deals faster. And now I'll hand it off to my colleague, Russ Khan, to discuss our PPA and EV revenue share offerings. Thanks, Matt. So electric vehicles are becoming very popular in the market right now with more than 25 automakers that are offering at least one all electric model. And in most cases, it's multiple. EV sales are growing at an annual clip of about 60%, which is incredible. By comparison, EV chargers, specifically public charging, and especially fast chargers, which are EV chargers that have a capacity of at least 50 kilowatts, are relatively rare. To give you an idea here of the ratio of EVs sold to public chargers available is about 20 to 1. And it gets worse. Only 20 of those publicly available chargers are actually fast chargers. 
So while EV chargers are growing at a very high rate, about 40 per year, they simply are not keeping up with the pace of EVs that are being sold in the state. So just to break down the value proposition that we're offering here for EV charging in more detail, here are some ways that we can help property owners. Just like our power purchase agreement, our EV offering includes no upfront cost to the customer. We provide a percentage of the revenue generated by the EV chargers to the property owner, and that typically falls between 5 to 10% of overall revenues. The solar we install will also offset the building's house meter, which will lower overall costs. The EV chargers become, as I said, a new amenity for the property owner's customers, and this allows the property owner to potentially attract new customers who are looking for fast charging for their EVs. We take care of all operations and maintenance for the EV chargers, as well as customer billing. Lastly, SCF is backed by some of the industry's largest and most successful financial partners, so you know that we're going to be there for the long haul. Next slide. Of course, in addition to our EV offering, SCF also offers our PPA financing as well. As a quick refresher on power purchase agreements, I want to remind everybody of some of the benefits here. So PPAs provide a lower cost of energy than the local utility, which provides savings to the property owner and increases net operating income. There are no upfront costs to the property owner, and SCF will also maintain the system for the life of the agreement. A PPA will cap energy costs moving forward to a known rate, which is typically anywhere between zero up to a maximum of 3% as what we call an escalator in a market where energy costs have recently been climbing 8, 10, even 12% per year, it's definitely a big factor for many energy customers. In addition to saving money and capping energy costs, one of the hop- highest topics out there sorry, <clears throat> is the term ESG. And for those of you who haven't turned this before, it stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. It's kind of a catch-all term that applies to corporations that want to be better corporate citizens. It's also been recently adapted as a criteria for evaluating stock price by investors and is therefore becoming pretty top of mind for many CEOs and CFOs. In terms of checking ESG goal boxes, adding solar to their facility is still top of their list. However, right behind that is EV charging. And if you want to get both in the same agreement, we believe the majority of your ESG goals can typically be met. So it's a pretty powerful offering. People want to take advantage of that and use ESG as part of their marketing or sales stock pitch. Uh, Ken, take it away. Well, thank you, Russ. Hello, I'm Ken Ellis, and I'm an account manager for SCF, and I'm covering the Southern California markets. Now, what makes a great EV charging site? Location, location, location. You know, we hear that all the time, but it is true. When you're looking for an EV charging station location, location is important. We want this experience to be easy and convenient with that goal to help drive additional revenue. Now, here are some examples of geographic and practical locations. You have your high local EV traffic. You have your high traffic based on the underlying patrons. We have proximity to freeways, major roadways, expressways, even locations with ample space, either on the roof or in the parking lot to install the solar. Just remember, make sure that the property can accommodate the solar system. Now, over to the right, we have some examples of businesses that would be great locations for our fast chargers. You have golf clubs, tennis clubs, multi-unit buildings, office buildings, shopping centers, fitness centers, coffee houses, and restaurants. Now, these businesses usually have customers that stay for at least 25 minutes, if not longer. So when you're calculating and thinking about where to put an EV charger, just remember location, geographic, and location business type. Next slide, please. So let me explain the SCF simplified process. Now our operations team goal is to get these projects energized faster. Now, the easiest way to expedite the development cycle of these large projects is to simplify that process. So that's what we strive for here at SCF. 
Now the initial steps are completed through our SEF suite. Just a friendly reminder that there are no subscription requirements or fees. You'll go in and register on our SEF suite. Once you've registered, you'll then go in and enter your customer's information and their utility data. Then once that, you'll model, price, and design your system, and then it will generate a proposal presentation. Now, once the SCF project team receives that a project is ready for review, our team will review your utility bills and city information, and then we'll reach out to coordinate the introductory call. Now, during this call, our SCF rep will present the various options to the customer and answer any of the initial questions. Now, if this customer is interested in proceeding, then a letter of intent will be populated and sent for signature. After that, a term sheet is executed. And then SCF will finalize diligence on the design, real estate title preferred, and various contracts will be sent for review and execution. Now, this simplified process enables our customers to execute agreements in as little as 30 days, and that's from initial design. and enables our installer partners to mobilize and energize systems faster than ever. Well, that's a wrap and the end of our presentation. Next is our question and answer session. If you have any questions, please submit them in the question box, and we will try to get to all of them. But if not, they will be added to the facts section in the SCF suite support section. So with that said, Matt, let's get started. So it looks like we got a question in uh, about the revenue share percentage and potentially adjusting that. So it really comes down to the off taker and the expected usage assumptions that we're uh, projecting for that respective site. Um, so there could be a scenario where we could support 15%. It really would be you know, in a higher usage area that we could potentially support 15. Um, 10 is generally the standard that we've we've pretty much um, optimized as a quality uh, arrangement and quality site lease agreement for our respective off taker partners. But if there's a scenario where 15 could apply, we could definitely adjust that. If there's a scenario where the off taker is interested uh, in even less than 10%, we could look at it that way as well. I'd say 10 is pretty much the standard that we're looking to present to these off taker partners, but uh, we are able to adjust that uh, on a smaller scale adjust. Um, but definitely dependent on the usage, usage assumptions for that respective off taker. Looks like we've got a question in, can we work in other states? Um, so primarily right now we're focused on California. California is just a great state from an EV tariff uh, demand structure standpoint, um, where we've come into difficulties across the United, the United States really has been with those demand structures and at respective utilities across uh, the nation. We we found uh, Michigan to a, a utility rate plan in Michigan that could potentially work uh, based on super low demand uh, structure for EV meters. Um, but that really is the biggest question when it comes to can we work in other states? You know, obviously, with the NEVI program in place, um, you know, added incentives for different states are going to be able to create solutions that are going to be financeable, essentially, if that's the word. Um, but it's really going to depend on, you know, are we able to, to work with that utility uh, and that utility structure uh, to be able to make, you know, an EV revenue share percentage work with that respective off taker. So California, obviously, very ahead of the game with EV, um, but as you've seen in the presentation today, the infrastructure across the nation is significantly lacking, and even in California alone. So a lot of opportunities that are gonna be uh, abounding, I, I assume, in the years to come. So being on the lookout, providing us with documentation, incentive structures, what have you, are definitely gonna uh, enable us to be able to uh, make those solutions work in those respective states. Um, looking at so, what if we have an off taker who wants solar plus EV plus EV, but you don't build it yourself? That's all right. Uh, we currently have a, a few install partners we're working with specifically for EV charging stations, um, so we could definitely access our network for those projects. Um, obviously, still building out that network nationwide, not quite to the level that our solar uh, solar network is through the use of our SCF suite to date, but. You know, obviously, as we put more projects 
in the ground and uh, pencil more opportunities and more states uh, in the years to come. We're definitely gonna build out that network uh, for other states. But for California specifically, we could definitely uh, utilize our network to, to build out uh, and, and provide you the access to do the solar as well. Looks like we have a question on if we're gonna send a copy of this recording out. Absolutely, uh, should, should be out probably within uh, the next couple hours. Uh, so be on the lookout uh, for your email. Uh, we should have a full uh, webinar recording uh, for you um, to access. Trying to think, is there any other questions? So how do we get registered? So uh, Ken probably mentioned there at the end, um, go ahead and reach out to us. Uh, we would be happy to spend half an hour to 45 minutes to a full hour going through the suite, answering any questions, going through any specific projects, running through as many iterations uh, that will work for the specific opportunity you're looking looking for. Um, you know, we'd be happy to get an MNDA in place with you, so, so you have some exclusivity sharing those projects, and uh, should definitely uh, should definitely um, reach out if if this looks like a, a potential tool. Uh, that could be used effectively for you. And really, you know, there's no reason that it can't be. Obviously, as um, commercial financing goes, it's hard to get numbers back. It's hard to get presentations and proposals in front of off takers quickly from financier companies. So we try to expedite that process. We try to utilize the suite as that tool. Um, so you can work a lot on your own. You don't have to rely on sales and project analysts to get back to you. Uh, you can just go ahead and do it on your own. And we're kind of there as a resource for you to help guide you through the suite, you know, prepare uh, any documentation uh, separate from the suite that we need to for you. Um, but obviously, as, as we've shown here today, generating proposals, running quick quotes, getting calculations done and priced um, really hasn't been easier uh, than with the SCS suite. Looks like we have a question on uh, what type of paperwork is required from the off takers to be approved. There are credit check financials, um, so generally with our solar plus EDC projects, we're looking at two years maybe of audited financials or CPA reviewed financials. Um, you know, there could be scenarios in which we've got a year of audited financials and a year of CPA reviewed. We've got you know uh, two years of CPA reviewed and, and some tax returns. Um, we could definitely work with this respective off taker uh, to you know, find a solution that's going to hopefully, you know, allow us to underwrite it and, and maintain those uh, those terms that we're hoping to, to maintain um, with revenue share and EV charging stations, EV charging stations in particular, um, there is an unknown. You know, we obviously know where the, the market's headed and where it's currently lacking. Um, so, you know, who is maintaining these charging stations? You know, obviously, SCF, um, but where these charging stations are located in some ways is a little bit um, not as much of a concern on an underwriting standpoint. Um, we obviously obviously account for a significant portion of our usage based on that off taker type, but you know, when it comes to the underwriting process for solar plus EDC, it's a little bit um, maybe not as complex if you've done our solar only underwriting. Um, but we definitely, definitely need to look at at least two years CPA reviewed or audited financials. Um, we can definitely take it on a case by case basis on your respective off taker. Looks like we have a question here on places of worship as a, as a nonprofit, any restrictions on the PPAs? Absolutely not. Nonprofits have definitely been a, a main source of business for us over the last few years. So, um, you know, we're, we're happy to finance at uh, any nonprofit. So schools, churches, uh, you name it, you know, they're obviously a lot more easy to underwrite because they're maintaining their 501c3 status every year. Um, so we're happy to work with them. And most of them are, are likely to be uh, you know, not cash rich. Um, so they're, they're usually a very good, uh, very good uh, um, off taker to target. So we don't have any other questions here. We'll go ahead and wrap up today. Like I mentioned, we'll have this presentation for you guys uh, within the next few hours. So thank you all for attending today. We look forward to seeing you at our next webinar series.